Hello guys and welcome to the 8th episode of our SketchUp plugin review series. This time I won't show you 3 plugins as I normally do, instead I'll show you just this one JHS power bar, but this plugin is actually a collection of ton of simple but very useful plugins all rolled up in this monster toolbar right here. And I want to fly over every single tool real quick, so let's get right into it. I'm feeling crazy today, so I'll start from the end. This tool adds C points, which are somewhat of a guide construction points in SketchUp with just a click. Or if geometry is pre-selected, it places them on vertices of the selected geometry. This one draws lines that connect these C points. And this one places a selected component on top of these C points. If some of your components are heavy on your graphics card and navigating becomes sluggish, with this tool right here, we can replace them with a proxy just by clicking on one of them. And to bring them all back, we just click on the proxy component again. This tool is a component replacer. With this tool activated while holding Alt on the keyboard, we select the source component and then click on each component we want to replace with our source component. By holding control, we replace them all with one click. By activating this tool on a group or component, we get this 3x3x3 three by three by three cage of control points that we can edit to our likings and thus create all kinds of interesting amorphic shapes. These next three tools subdivide faces. The first one allows you to choose the size of the faces of the mesh. This other one lets you choose the number of subdivisions. And this last one lets you choose the number of columns and rows of the mesh grid. This is an align tool. You select the object you want to align, activate the tool, select the start origin point, its X and Y axis, and then the end origin point and its X and Y axis. This is a 3D rotate tool. You select the origin point, then grab the object where you want, and pick the target where you want your object to rotate to. This tool allows you to rotate your object just by pressing your arrow keys on the keyboard. This tool randomly scales selected components. This one randomly rotates them. And this one does both of those things at the same time. If you activate one of these tools without selecting anything, you can open the settings by pressing Alt on the keyboard. Here you can set your minimum and maximum rotation and or scale, as well as your rotation or scale pivot point. This one is the upright extruder and it practically does the same thing follow me tool does, but unlike the follow me tool that twists the extruded face in all three directions, this tool keeps the extruded face upright. This tool, the face finder, searches for coplanar edge loops and fills them with faces. This tool allows you to offset single edges. It becomes very useful when drawing house or building plans. This one extrudes lines, similar to push line plugin we reviewed in one of our past episodes. This one right here extrudes a rectangular face along a given path. Once you select your path and activate the tool, you get to type the dimension of the rectangle here. This one creates a pipe around the given path. And this one creates a tube. This next one places components along a path. You just select your path, activate the tool, select the component, and input the desired distance between them. These next three tools flatten objects or vertices on a chosen axis. The red axis, the green axis, and the blue axis. This tool drops selected objects vertically on a surface below them. And this one drops them at a user-defined altitude. This is a simple mirror tool. You select the object you want to mirror and then click on three points to define the mirror plane. This tool turns separate but connected edges into a curve or a polyline. This one here does the reverse operation. It explodes curves 
into edge segments. And this one here divides the polyline into equal segments defined by number of edges or edge length. This tool allows you to move your object just by pressing your arrow keys on the keyboard. And this last group of tools up here are just smoothing tools. This first one is somewhat of a summary of all of them in one. And the others, one by one, are just quick presets of things you control inside this dialog box. This one runs the latest settings. This next one does the light smoothing to an angle of 25 degrees. This one does hard smoothing to an angle of 175 degrees. This one unsmooths all. And this one smooths to quadrants. <sighs> So that is it for this episode. I wanted to run through all the tools real fast without any useless chit chat. And I will end this video the same way. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Alvida.